And so, as you can see, everyone, Badlands National Park, located in South Dakota, is a magnificent place full of unique... Oh, yes. Yeah, so what exactly are Badlands, anyway? I am so glad you asked that, Charlotte. Oh, actually, my name's Julia. Okay. Badlands National Park is named for the type of land that is there. Badlands. And badlands are a thing in themselves. The word badland with a lowercase b is a type of land that can be found all over the world, in New Zealand, Argentina, Italy, and multiple places in the United States. In fact, one of my favorite places of all time that I've ever explored is a badlands park that's located in Colorado, but more on that later. The question for us right now is how did badlands get their name? And what exactly are badlands? That's literally what I just asked. Is she is she not listening to me? The word Badlands originated in Native American dialect right in the area that Badlands National Park is located today. A Native American tribe known as the Oglala Lakota people inhabited the Badlands National Park area for hundreds of years. They called this land Mako Sika, which literally translates to bad lands. So why did they call it this? I mean, what is so bad about these lands? Turns out, a lot. As beautiful as the Badlands are, they're not the most fruitful or practical or safe or they kind of suck all around to live on. This is because Badlands are composed of soft sedimentary rock that erode away very, very easily. And rock like this poses a whole host of challenges. In fact, to get a good perspective on these challenges, let's pretend that we are a traveler trying to navigate across the Badlands. We start our journey on a bright, sunny day. The sunshine is nice for a while, but eventually you start to get hot. You reach for your water only to find that you've already run out. No problem, we'll just head over to a water source. Except, oh, there, there aren't any in Badlands. You finally find a small puddle, but it is so muddy from all the eroded rock that you know it's not safe to drink. Okay, no problem, don't need to panic. I mean, traversing this land can't be that hard and take that long, right? Well, to answer this question, let's take a look at how the Badlands are laid out. Because the rock erodes so easily, there are numerous crevices and small canyons carved out from the rivers and rainwater that's washed over the area in the last several thousand years. This means you go one way only to find yourself on the precipice of a canyon, and then go another way only to end up in the same situation. And that's not all. This rock is so soft that it crumbles under your feet as you walk. Which means you better be careful not to get too close to the edges of those canyons. The land here is unpredictable, and the extreme amounts of erosion that have occurred make it very hard, nearly impossible, to find a solid, clear, continuous path. You manage to be slowly making your way across, though, and eventually you look up to the sky and see that the sun has disappeared behind a layer of clouds. Raindrops splash onto your face. So this is good, right? Because now we can get some much-needed water. Well, as you probably guessed, rain is not the most convenient thing for us, either. The fresh rainfall turns the ground into wet, slick, sticky clay that sucks at your shoes with every step you take. So if you spent $200 on that really nice pair of hiking boots, um, they're gone now. That was the mud, that sound was the mud sucking them up and just, you're, you gotta leave them there. They're stuck in the mud, sorry. So yeah, Badlands aren't exactly great for travel. And for agriculture, they pretty much totally stink too. The land is fruitless. You, you really can't grow much of anything there. These qualities that we talked about of the Badlands being hard to navigate across and certainly hard to live on because you can't grow anything are pretty much consistent around all Badlands everywhere in the world. But <laughs> okay, let's not hate on them too much because while they aren't the most practical type of land in terms of living situations, the Badlands actually have a lot of really unique, beautiful and redeeming qualities. So let's talk about those for a minute. What the Badlands lack in practicality, they make up for in their beauty and in the stories that they tell. You see, the Badlands are super cool because when you look at all these exposed layers, you're actually seeing a timeline. The way that the Badlands have formed over time actually reveals an entire story of the area's history on Earth. 
through the type of rock sediment that's there or the fossils that we find, because there have been a lot of fossils, we're able to learn so much about the Earth's history in that particular area because we have so much to work with and so much that we can see. You see, the formation of Badlands, both in Badlands National Park and Badlands and other areas of the world, have two main phases to them, deposition and erosion. Deposition began 75 million years ago and continued until about 28 million years ago. This is when all the different layers of rock layered on top of itself. During this time, different oceans and bodies of water washed over the area, bringing with them tons of sedimentary rock. And then to cap off the deposition phase, we have a volcanic eruption, which is just the coolest way to end anything in geology, I have to say. A nearby volcano erupted and covered the area with volcanic ash and rock. This forms the most recent layer of the Badlands. It's a general rule of thumb in geology that the layers closest to the surface are most recent, and the deeper you go, the further back in time we travel. Like I said, the volcanic rock formed the top layer, which is the most recent, but as you go down further, you can learn more and more about what the area was like millions and millions of years ago. But something had to expose all these layers for us to see. Otherwise, they would still be underground and we wouldn't be able to see them. This brings us to the second phase of formation, which is erosion. The Badlands began eroding around 500,000 years ago. At this time, two rivers, the Cheyenne and White Rivers, washed over the area and created the major canyons and peaks that we see in the Badlands today. And today, even though the rivers aren't there anymore, the Badlands are still eroding at a pace that is insanely fast for rock to erode, and this is just because of the rainfall in the area. In fact, we estimate that the Badlands are eroding at a rate of about one inch per year, which is like lightning fast in rock time. For some perspective, there's a bunch of granite located west of the Badlands, and this is eroding at a rate of one inch for every 10,000 years. So yeah, the Badlands are absolutely cooking along. They're like, what's a sports car? Uh, the Lamborghini of the rocks, but like not really. Forget that analogy, that doesn't work. These processes of deposition and erosion form the gorgeous formations that we see today, whether they're in South Dakota or anywhere else in the world. In a way, I think of them as a work of art that the Earth created because they're colorful and they tell a story. What if I told you that this masterpiece in itself could actually be used by humans to create art as well? Full disclosure, I don't actually know if this would be possible for Badlands National Park or every form of Badland, but I do know that it is possible in at least one particular Badlands, which are in Colorado. And these are the Badlands that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video. So let's jump back to those. Colorado has a gorgeous park called the Paint Mines Interpretive Park. This is an area of incredibly colorful Badlands. And when I say colorful, I mean it looks like someone took giant buckets of paint and just splashed them all over the rocks there. It is one of the coolest places I have ever been. In fact, the fascinating, colorful properties of the rock drew in the Native Americans who inhabited the area many, many years ago. They actually used this beautiful, colorful, and malleable clay to make pottery and paints. This historical significance is exactly how the paint mines got their name today. So all in all, I would say that Badlands aren't a great place to make your home, but they sure are a unique and fascinating place to visit. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on learning more about nature's wonders. And I'm curious, would you like to know how the paint mines got so colorful? Because I think I would. So if you want me to make a video on that, explaining the science behind how it got so colorful there, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. If you don't want to hear that, or you want to hear something in addition to that, leave a comment and tell me what national park I should cover first, or even if you have questions about the national parks. That's a lot of options, wow. Basically, as this channel grows, I would love to hear your feedback and what you guys want to see. I love these videos. I think they are an absolute blast, and I want to make sure that I'm making things that my viewers enjoy. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Yeah, sorry, just one more question. Um, we're all over here, and you're looking over there, so who are you talking to?